Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. My day has started out great because I get to spend time with my beautiful night now monitor named Abasuku. I tell you, it is so crazy that this animal has become this unbelievably socialized. You know, just like dogs and cats, there are certain animals that are just known for being a little bit more temperamental. Well, Nile monitors in particular are definitely one of those monitor lizards that seem to be just a little bit more cantankerous. So they have a bigger attitude. They definitely kind of stand their ground, if you know what I mean. And you guys remember Abasuku, just six months back, she was <laughs> crazy. She was a beast. I mean, if I was anywhere close to her like this, she'd be chomping on my finger right now. So it's pretty amazing that this is kind of, in my eyes, like the holy grail of kind of socialization. Getting an animal from a point where she's thinking like food all the time to thinking that she's absolutely docile and can mess with her like nothing and never have to worry about her at all. Although every now and then when you make a fast move, just like I did a minute ago, she like looks and says, oh, is that something to eat? But you know, with the fact that we have ball trained her, target trained her, really took away that food aggression, right? Because she knows I'm not getting food unless I see a blue ball. And as long as there's not a blue ball, she knows there's no food. I tell you, she's amazing. And we're gonna try to do the same thing with a croc monitor over at the new Reptarium. My buddy Forrest is actually giving us one that's a captive born year and a half old animal that is crazy and very, very defensive and food aggressive. And we're gonna try to work the exact same way that we did with Abasuku here with that animal. It's gonna be so exciting. If we can achieve that, who doggy? I tell you, that's gonna be amazing. You know, we've actually tamed out all of our monitor lizards to the point where they can all be handled. But Argamus Prime has still been a little bit cantankerous here. You know, we've definitely ball trained them, just calmed them down a lot. But the truth is, is it's sometimes it's kind of cool to have one kind of insane monitor that just will go absolutely nuts. Come on, bud. Come on. Come on. Come on. Woo! Come on, buddy. <laughs> I always say he's kind of like my dolphin show, if you know what I mean. He loves to just kind of fly around, and he is an animal that uh, will get you if you're not careful for sure. Come on, uh, come on, bud. Come on. Okay, there we go. Oh! Oh, come on, little buddy. It's kind of fun, right? Because, you know, having all these, like, super socialized monitor lizards, I don't want to say it's boring, because it's not. Because it's cool to have an animal like that. But to have an animal like Argamas here, is pretty awesome. Woo! Come on, buddy. There you go. There you go. Ah. He is just so absolutely amazing. I love him to death. So although we want him to be somewhat socialized and he's definitely way better than he used to be, we kind of still want to have him a little bit of energy, right? Because uh, after all, this is what they're going to be like in the wild. So we can show all these socialized monitor lizards like Abasuku and Toothless and Elvis. And then we have the other side here with Argamas that kind of shows what monitor lizards really are like. So I love the kind of variance when it comes to keeping these guys. So I don't know that I'll ever want Argamas to be the tamest of animals because then we're kind of taking away what makes him so special. And trust me, he is special. We're gonna let him finish this last mouse and we're gonna give him one more mouse to try to get him back in his cage. But I'll be honest with you, we could pick him up right now because he's actually gotten pretty good about it. But let's go ahead and see if we can get him back in. Come on, bud. There you go. There you go. Back in your cage, back in your cage, back in your cage. Oop, there you go, bud. There he goes. Oop, there you go, sweetheart. <laughs> so again, we could probably get him much more socialized, but I think he's great just the way he is. With Jessica, which means that we must be getting some gecko eggs. What do yeah, we have today? Got cave gecko eggs. Cave gecko yeah, eggs. Yeah, the Chinese nice. caves. These oh are gosh. some of our females that we actually raised up from last year. Oh, really? So these are first yeah. year females? Oh my gosh. And both of them laid, so. Oh, wow. Is this the first clutch this year? I got one while you were out of town sometime, oh, okay. so this will be the second and third. Oh my God, that's awesome. So with these guys, they dig pretty much all the way to the bottom, so let oh, okay. just check. Well, they didn't this time. Okay, so you just gotta find them. Yep. Oh, there's one. There's one egg right there. It looks good too. Oh, there's the two. And of course, most geckos, uh, if they're doing everything right, lay two eggs at a time. So we've got one clutch there. And you said you think both of them laid? Mm -hmm. Well, I know for sure they did because I caught the other one laid. Oh, okay, gotcha. And I knew these ones were in there. Okay, good. So we've got two more in there somewhere. I think she was in this area. Yep, there they are. Oh, there they are. Oh my God, that's gecko awesome. mastery over here. Jeez. 
They look nice and good. They Both look good sets. too, so them. that's awesome. We have a bunch of cave geckos this year. That's awesome. That's super cool. More gecko eggs. Yeah, oh, we got a crested gecko egg <laughs> crested today. Crested gecko eggs. All right. Awesome. That's cool. Is this the same girl that the one baby hatched the other day? No. Oh, this is a different female. girl. Different yep. female. Okay. This is uh, Columbia. Columbia. These guys don't mess up their uh, dirt as much as the other geckos, I've noticed. It look, doesn't even look like they lay eggs. Oh, there's one egg. Don't think there's another one just because they're usually right next to each other. Yeah, just one. Yeah, and like I mentioned earlier, normally geckos lay two eggs when they're firing, but sometimes an overduck just won't fire. Uh, in this case, it was uh, point proven that uh, there's only one egg in the crested gecko. And look at this, guys. We've yeah. got a little gargoyle gecko. Oh it my looks gosh. so cool. It, like, it's all gray right now, but I think it's going to have some orange blotching. Orange when blotching. It sheds out, yeah. Oh my God, that is so adorable. Look at you little monkey. Whoa. We're finally starting to get a lot of eggs with the, the new Caledonians and stuff, which is really exciting. That is super exciting. I'm, I love these guys, they are so adorable. And as excited as I am about all the geckos, the one that I'm the most excited about is Tiki's Gecko's Deadpool line. And the girl is in her nest box right now. <gasps> Looks like she's loaded up with eggs too. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so she should, you think she'll lay pretty soon, right? I think so, yeah. Oh so my gosh. Usually they'll dig for a couple days. I think this will be her first time laying oh for gosh. us, so it might be more like a week or two. Oh my gosh, holy cow. I can't wait though. Hers that, I'm really excited for. I am so excited for those babies. Oh my gosh. I'll keep you guys posted as soon as she lays. Taking a quick break for the day for a tour that is in the house. Uh, a bunch of kids uh, that are just on kind of holiday break right now. Come in, uh, gonna show them some cool animals and have a good time, and then we'll get back to work. Obviously the wall is open up over here. We just have it kind of temporarily closed up. For those of you guys that missed that, I'll actually put a link in the description of when we opened up. It's absolutely incredible. So the Reptarium expansion is coming along. Uh, and guess what guys? We now have a kind of set date when we need help with the installation. I know a lot of you guys have reached out to me and said, hey Brian, how can I help? Well, February 3rd, Monday, February 3rd, hopefully about eight o'clock in the morning, we're gonna have the truck show up and we're gonna need to load the enclosures in. So. If you want to help out, you can hit me up at info at BHB Reptiles. Send me your information, I'll get back to you. We need probably 20 to 25 people to come in to help install, get this done, probably just one day. I mean, a few days we could use some help, but not by 25 people, a few people to do little things here and there, possibly. If it's something that you're interested in doing, hanging out with me the other day, but we're gonna be working our butts off, people. Uh, info at BHB Reptiles, again, February 3rd. Hopefully that doesn't change, but that's what we're hoping for. Couldn't be more excited we have our work cut out for us there's still a lot to do here but we're on track and i think that that's the date that's gonna all happen and if you guys are wondering why february 3rd is so important to me basically i have my buddy ed from aquascape it's gonna be coming in he's an expert on filtration now the anaconda tank the gator tank and the turtle tank are all gonna have aquascape filters on them and we're actually gonna punch right through the floor right here and that's gonna be the actual drain so i really would like to have ed here because he's the mastermind behind all of our filtration and that's the only day that he can make it in February. We don't want to push it off to March. So that's why February 3rd is so important. So we are going to be diligently working our butts off to make that happen. Kind of an interesting looking ball python here. This is what a lot of people refer to as IMG. Basically, you can see how crazy that pattern and color is right there. Basically what happens is that for some reason, some ball pythons, very few at a certain stage will shed out the pigment for some reason. Now, interestingly enough, Mary and Eric ended up getting a pinstripe that did the exact same thing from the same bloodline from us last year, where it got to about this size, went through a shed cycle, wasn't a rough shed, wasn't a hard shed, shed completely fine, but then just all of a sudden looks like it's crazy, like a bunch of the pigment is gone. Now, ultimately, usually this ends up turning like a blackish color, a darker color as they get older. But nevertheless, I don't know that it's genetic. I mean, people have been working on it for a long time and I don't know that anyone's ever proved out. It is interesting though, that the same bloodline of pinstripe would happen two years in a row. Glad you're joining me in the colubrid room today. We're gonna be doing some feeding, but I kind of wanted to show you what gets fed when, okay? So from about here over, you see all these tags here, 
these are all of our breeder snakes. We're raising them up to breed. We specifically have groups and you know, our technical little stuff in here. And these other guys, we're not necessarily breeding them yet or we don't have them on the breeding plan. So we feed them about once a week. So these guys twice a week, these guys once a week. Today I'm going through, I'm feeding everything today. And uh, let's take you through the process. I gotta count up some stuff. We're, we're constantly moving these guys. So these guys we're moving into the half tubs, we call them. The smaller guys and the take alongs we're moving into here. Just a busy process today. If everything goes well, and there's still some things that have to go well, we're actually going to do our first podcast this coming Wednesday, the 6th, at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, it's just going to be an introductory podcast to let you guys know what the deal is. I'm going to put a link in the description, pin a comment, go sub it, check it out. Again, this Wednesday coming up, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come join us over on the Checking In podcast channel. Hopefully, all the equipment will be working well, and we'll be online. We'll have a good time for an hour or so. We'll just kind of talk about some things, and then we'll really start up after that. But I really would love you to join us for our first introductory podcast. Time to feed my girl Salty. Ready, Salt? There you go, girl. There you go. Ooh, you went crazy on me. There you go, girl. There you go, girl. And you can see that sound. She's really keying on that sound now. As soon as I make the sound, she starts to thrash around. She knows food's coming, which is amazing. There you go, girl. And again, because Salt and Pepper are gonna go back in, they've got two different sounds. That way I can call Salt over with that sound and Pepper with another sound. There you go, girl. All right, Pepper isn't quite as good as Salt, so we'll give her a try and hopefully she'll eat a little bit. There you go, buddy. There you go. There you go. And you can see she's starting to key on that sound as well. So again, two different sounds. Uh, they're both really doing well and that's gonna work out really good. We're in the same case. That way they're not fighting for food as well as the fact I can get them to come over and stage in certain areas when I want them to. So what amazing animals. All right, guys, I gotta go hit another tour and I'm gonna end it here if you guys don't mind. If you did like this video, here's another video I would love for you to click on to help my click through rate. Over here, you can roll through all the 2019 playlist if you really want to. Over here, you can hit that subscribe button, turn the post notification on. If you don't mind, have a wonderful day and you better be kind to someone. I promise, I'll see you guys tomorrow.